woman, this is the name of your body. This is not who you are. These are all labels. You could say they are name tags. American, British, Hindu, Muslim, etc. These are labels and some people identify themselves so intensely with these labels that they are willing to die. Die for these labels. People die for their country. And you know what is happening in the name of religion. People don't want to know about religion anymore. But it's not religion that's diseased. It's human beings. They identify themselves with religions, resort to terrorism. They not only die for their religion, but they also kill others. Mind you, these are just name tags. This is not who you are. So you are like that madman in the lunatic asylum who doesn't know himself. And in order to know yourself, you don't even know, need to go into any book of scripture. You can go into the book of life and find out. There are a lot of things in life that can teach you. Now, in life, there is a, a state which is referred to as death. Now, whenever anybody dies, what do we say? You know, so and so, my neighbor, he departed from this world at 10 o'clock this morning. I'm sorry to tell you, I know we had a dinner appointment together. I cannot come because I have to pay my respects to him. What? You're just telling me that he departed from this world, right? And you're saying that you're going to pay your respects to him. So are you also going to leave this world that is die? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to die. I, in fact, I don't even know where he's gone. I'm going to pay my last respects to his body. Oh, I see. That means you are now differentiating between that which you are going to pay your respects to and that which left the body. That means there are two things, right? One, the body, and one, the person who left. Now, I want you to tell me about that which left. Can you tell me? Uh, well, about that, uh, I don't really know much, but I have heard that it is called a soul, atma. Some people call it a spirit. That's what I have heard. You have heard. That means you don't even know yourself. If somebody were to ask you your name and you say, well, I have heard my name is Ramesh Gupta, then what are people going to do? They're going to laugh at you and they're going to send you to the madhouse. He's saying, I've heard. He doesn't even know his own name. So you see that we do not know ourselves. We say we have heard, but we identify ourselves with this physical body. We do not know anything, or you could say much about the soul, and we do not identify with it. We may talk about it, but the identification is not there. So we are also mad. What does a mad person do? He laughs, he cries, he jumps, he runs. He does the same things that we also do. But the way he does these things, they are different from us. And because they are different from us, we think he's mad and send him to the lunatic asylum. Suppose somebody hits another person and you ask him, why did you hit that person? Because he abused me. You ask another person, why did you hit that person? I felt like. What do you mean you felt like? Without reason, you just hit him. Yes, I felt like I hit him. Okay, I'm going to lock you up in a madhouse now. You're mad. No reason. You just want to hit somebody. Just as those people who are different from us, who don't follow the norms of society, we think they are mad, and we send them to the lunatic asylum. 
In the same way, the saints also consider us mad because we are different from them. We are suffering in this world and yet we desire this world. We are attached to it. When we experience setbacks in this world, we become detached. And again we become attached. Again we become detached. Detached, attached. This keeps going on. Sometimes we are sensible, sometimes we are mad. It's like the story of Jawaharlal Nehru. He was uh, one of our old prime ministers in India. He once happened to visit a madhouse, a lunatic asylum, and the doctor was escorting him around to the different wards, telling him about the patients there. And he pointed out to one person who was uh, in charge of a ward. He said, you know, this man, I put him in charge of this particular ward. He's also mad, but he's less mad than the others, and he's capable of looking after them. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was curious to know what is less madness. So he started talking to this person and he said, tell me what your name is. He answered, just as we do. And uh, what is your father's name? What is your mother's name? What is your education? Where do you live? Every question was answered perfectly. The prime minister couldn't understand why the doctor said he is less mad. He, he seems perfect to me. The doctor smiled. At that moment, this person asked the prime minister a question. Can I ask you a question? Of course you can. Can you tell me who you are? Don't you know? I'm the prime minister of India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. This man started laughing loudly. And he said, doctor, you know that person in the bed who says he's uh, Mahatma Gandhi? There's another bed empty next to him. Put this man over there. Doctor said, look, I was telling you, he's mad, and now you don't need any more proof. This is exactly the way we are, detached, attached. All the time, we keep changing our decisions. Still, we go back and desire this material world. The saints really wonder how lucky these people are. They are blessed with the human form of life, which is the highest form, and they have the gift of knowledge. And what are they doing? Their entire life revolves around just one central goal. Money, money, money. Just keep on making more money, more money, more money. And after that, what happens? We leave empty-handed. I remember reading a book called Conversations with God. Probably some of you have read this book. And I remember a particular passage, which is perfect for, for what I'm saying. One person approached God and said, uh, I want to have an interview with you. Do you have time to answer my questions? God says, I've, I've got all the time in the world. You're the person who's busy. Your line is engaged. Mine is free. Come on, ask me what you want to. He said, tell me. What surprises you most about mankind? And God replied, As children, they quickly get bored and rush to grow up. You watch children. We were children. And we would always want to imitate others. We want to wear what somebody, my elder sister, elder brother wears. Children, they want to go around in high heel shoes and imitate you. So they want to rush to grow up. They don't like being children. And once we are grown up, we long to be children again. They waste their health to gain wealth, and then they lose their wealth to gain health. And they live as though they are never going to die, and die as though they have never lived. This is the sum total of our lives. It is madness, and that's why the saints consider us mad, and we, we think they are mad. 
Just as the mad person, suppose a doctor tells a person, look, I have found out from your behavior that you are mad, so you'll have to be admitted. What, I'm mad? You must be mad. He calls the doctor mad. In the same way, we never admit that we are mad. We say, look, I'm not in a lunatic asylum. How can you call me mad? Who says you're not? We are all in a lunatic asylum. What is this world? This whole world is a lunatic asylum made by God for us. You can call it a prison house. You can call it a lunatic asylum. And those who do not know themselves, they remain in this madhouse for treatment. Just as we also, in the material world, those people whom we consider mad, we've got special hospitals or lunatic asylums for them. In the same way, God has also made this huge, big, lunatic asylum for us. And we are all here because we are mad and we need to be treated and cured of our madness. Those of us who get treated, we are liberated from this madhouse and we attain that divine abode and experience supreme bliss. Just as we have medical doctors to treat insane people, in the same way God also sends spiritual doctors to treat us. They are called saints, godmen, or mahatmas. Now they come to treat us and they, they tell us what medicine can rid us of our madness. But our madness is so acute. It's not a madness of just this life. It's a madness of countless lives. Therefore, whatever medicine they are prescribing to us, it takes so long to work. Whereas the mad person in the lunatic asylum, the one whom we think is mad, he's been mad for a couple of months or a couple of years and he gets treated. Now those of us who are less mad, we listen to the saints, we accept what they say and surrender to them. Those who surrender are cured and are liberated from this lunatic asylum. But those whose madness is extreme, they are not willing to accept that they are mad, and they try to get rid of these saints who have come to cure them. So we are all mad. Not only the person in the lunatic asylum, but all of us who are in this great, big, lunatic asylum made by God. Now I know that whenever anybody is called mad, they become mad with anger. So don't worry, we can get some consolation once we know that not only we, the saints call us mad, but do you know even they are mad? In fact, uh, at least our madness is curable. Their madness is incurable. The great saint uh, Ramakrishna Paramhans, who is the guru of Swami Vivekanand, a lot of people know Swami Vivekanand more, especially in the West. You know what he said? He said, my friends, this whole world is a lunatic asylum. Some are mad after worldly love, some after name and fame, and some after money. In this lunatic asylum, I am also mad. I am mad after God. You are mad after money, and I am mad after God. You are mad, and so am I. But my madness is after all the best. Their madness is a divine intoxication. Let me relate to you an episode in Sri Maharaj's life. This happened long, long ago. He happened to be giving lectures in a small little town named Raigarh in Madhya Pradesh. 
In this little town, there was a very, very rich man. In fact, he literally owned half the town. Now, this rich man, his name was Karodimal. What a name, perfect name. He owned millions. So this man, it was a custom with him that any dignitary, any saint who came to town, it was like a feather in his cap. He would always invite them, make them sign on his register, and then he would show it around. Look, all pride, because a lot of rich men, they don't consider themselves less than God. The moment he came to know that Sri Maharaji is here to give lectures, he invited him to come to his house. Please come and bless my little house. Sri Maharaji said, I am your guest and you are my host. I will only accept your hospitality under one condition. I want you to attend every lecture that I'm going to give in this town, and then I'll definitely visit your house. This man agreed, but he never found the time, nor did he have an inclination. He was only busy making money. So he did not attend the lecture even one day, and when it happened to be the last day, he became desperate. How come this saint is going to leave town? He's not come to my house. It's going to be a shame for me. So he approached Sri Maharaji, I'm so sorry, please, uh, I want you to still come to my house. I've not been able to attend. All the excuses. Sri Maharaji said, yes, yes, I'll come to your house, don't worry. Today is the last day, I'm busy. What Sri Maharaji did was, he wrote a very meaningful poetry, a couplet. He sent it to his house and left that town immediately. The couplet was, Nasha hai tujko dunia ka, aur mujhe hai dunia wale ka. Mera maashuk saaki hai, tu aashik khali piyale ka.